Tfue just came out and released his official statement after the announcement came out that he was leaving the FaZe Clan. So in this video, we're gonna be talking about the aspect of this story where FaZe Banks is trying to emotionally manipulate Tfue. What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul, where we talk about the problem, but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, what I like to do is take different stories that are going on on YouTube or Twitch or just in pop culture in general and trying to see what lessons we can learn from them. So if you're into that stuff, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And real quick announcement, I have recorded episode four of the podcast and it is going to be going live on all the different streaming services very soon. Just waiting for my submission to get approved and all that jazz. Um, right now they are actually up um, in streaming format on the YouTube channel if you wanna check them out. But anyways, make sure you're following me on Instagram and Twitter at The Rewired Soul so you can stay up to date once the stream, uh, not the stream, but the podcast gets launched, all right? Okay, so yeah, I wanna talk about this story because uh, a, a topic that I feel a lot of us need to discuss is emotional uh, manipulation. I also wanna talk things uh, like self-seeking. And again, the point of my channel is to look at these stories and try to look at you know what, what's going on. How can I relate to this? Is this happening with a relationship I have? Because on FaZe Bank's end, he, he's very hurt by this because he considered um, Tifu a friend. He said he was family and everything like that. And we need to discuss this. All right, so anyways, I'm not gonna be diving into the whole legal aspect of it, like that is way above my pay grade. I'm sure somebody like Philip DeFranco will discuss that. But anyways, let's talk about this story, just kind of summarize it real quick. So, um, it was just announced that Tifu is actually suing the FaZe Clan to get out of his contract. The contract talks about how, you know, there are stipulations in there, like FaZe Clan can get 80% and he gets 20%. There's some things about brand deals and everything like that. And it was a three-year contract, all right? And to my understanding, I believe Tifu has been under that contract for about a year or so, okay? So he's suing them. Now, there was other things in that contract, things like, you know, uh, the FaZe Clan was promoting, like, underage drinking and gambling and doing like stunts that you know hurt him and everything like that but anyways Tifu in his uh, statement apologized to FaZe Banks and the FaZe Clan because he wanted the lawyer to not add that stuff in there so he did apologize for that but anyways not long after that <laughs> FaZe Banks made a lot of mistakes he is very emotionally driven and in situations like this I talked about this in my last video like you gotta chill out like once lawyers are getting involved in everything you need to bzz, zip it but he immediately went on drama alert with Keemstar. He did an interview there. And then he released a video on his own channel titled Dear Tifu. okay? And this is where the emotional manipulation started to come in, all right? So again, I get it. I understand why FaZe Banks is upset, why he's hurt by this. But one of the issues that a lot of us struggle with is having relationships that are transactional, all right? And self-seeking. So. So many of us, we follow this delusion that we are nice, we are good people, we're doing things for other people, right? And in FaZe Banks' mind, and it's something that he said in his video, is that he he gave this kid Tifu a chance, right? So, and it's true, it's very true. And maybe that's why Tifu stayed with them as long as they did, right? But one of the things that we have to ask ourselves, like when I'm looking at this situation, it's like, how long do we owe somebody for helping us, okay? Like, there's no, there's no like strict guideline of how long do we owe somebody, right? Like, the way this is being portrayed is that it's like a, like a life debt, okay? Now, Banks has brought up um, the fact that Tifu didn't communicate this with him and everything like that. In my opinion, and I talked about this a little bit in my last video just about esports and contracts and players getting screwed or even like YouTubers and influencers getting screwed and everything like that. Like, listen, this might have been Tifu's only course of action and he might have been advised you know, by his lawyers or Banks mentions that his family might be involved and things like that. But here's the thing, like seeing FaZe Banks pop off on Twitter even more. What I don't think, or it's probably just something FaZe Banks doesn't wanna bring up, is that Tifu was locked into a three-year contract, okay? Three years, 
three years and obviously this kid hit his stride he is like the number one Fortnite player right now him and ninja always duke it out going back and forth but that was a three-year contract so a new contract would just lock this dude down even longer you see what i mean and something i was talking about in my last video was in this day and age there is not really a need for an organization to to even be involved right like i guess in tfue's instance like it's good they give him that boost but like a one-year contract is like probably what you should get into just my suggestion my advice if anybody's getting into the youtube sphere or the the twitch streamer uh sphere but like i said like banks is holding this over tifu's head and it's kind of messed up because here's the thing like i want you to i want you to ask yourself this like imagine imagine that you were you were having a hard time in your life and your friend hooked you up with a job Okay, your friend hooked you up with a job, you took that job, you're forever grateful, you thank them, you thank them, you thank them, you go to that job, you do your best at that job, you don't make your friend look stupid, all right? You just kill it at that job, okay? And then after you're at that job for a year, you finally just up and leave for a better job, all right? Like, does your friend have the right to get mad at you, okay? Like, how long were you supposed to stick around? Like, how long was was that favor good for you see what i mean like this is something that happens in abusive relationships as well like i'm not saying face banks was abusing him but just to give you guys some more context of what you might be dealing with this happens a lot in relationships this is often why people feel trapped in relationships because there's this kind of like power dynamic and the other person is holding stuff over their head so say for example there is a man who dates a woman and it is an abusive relationship right but she is a stay-at-home mom takes care of the kids and he works he pays the bills he puts food on the table he pays you know for the cars and whatever it is right and she can't leave she can't do anything because he keeps saying how much he takes care of her and she owes him right this is what we call being held as an emotional hostage somebody is playing with your emotions and using that as leverage to make you feel bad about the situation now in the situation with tifu and phase banks like this is like a business thing you see what i mean and this is one of the reasons why they say like don't like mix like business with friendship and everything like that but i really want you guys to think about this because this is something that's been on my mind like i have had people i've had people help me out okay like seven years ago when i was first getting clean and sober i've had people who helped me out immensely and like since then i've had people who have relapsed people who have just stopped being the person that they used to be and i've had people try to hold that over my head and i have to set up boundaries with them and say yo like i appreciate everything that you've done for me but this relationship isn't working anymore and i have to do that and like aside from the fact that this whole situation with tifu is like groundbreaking when it comes to like um esports and talent agencies and the laws and like how contracts are written on this kind of new landscape aside from all of that what i think people should be taking away from this situation is is just knowing that you don't have to stay in a relationship if that relationship is no longer working out for you all right now to end this video i just want to give my personal thoughts and opinions if i was tifu if I was Tifu in this situation. Now, I, and I don't know everything that's going on, there might be more going on than I know, but just from what we've seen, it seems to me like Tifu gave them a lot, right? He, they, they, they had him for a year. He represented FaZe Clan, okay? And it is undeniable that until he signed up with FaZe, he was relatively unknown. All right, uh, FaZe Banks talked about that in his interview with Keemstar and then in his own video and everything. Now, there might be some other things going on. I think Cloaks, uh, Cloaksy mentioned that, you know, Tifu was having a problem with management and everything like that. But in a perfect world, Tifu would have gone up to Banks and said, hey man, I appreciate everything that you've done, but I have to, 
get a lawyer involved so I can get out of this contract. Like, I no longer want to be part of this organization. Like, just on like, kind of like a friend level, like I think that would have been cool, but there are many things that we don't know about this situation. You know what I mean? And it's one of those things too, like, have you ever just like had to bounce out of a situation because you knew, you knew if that, if they, you tried to have a conversation with them, they would somehow figure out a way to manipulate you into not leaving that situation, right? Like maybe even it was even a party, right? Like you just left the party because if you went and told the people at the party that you were leaving, they were going to like peer pressure you and talk you into staying. So you're like, listen, I can't even have that conversation because I know I will get pressured into staying. So I just got to bounce. You see what I mean? So in this, in this overall story, I want you guys to understand that like you, sometimes you gotta make rough decisions and sometimes taking care of yourself is going to hurt other people's feelings. Like I hope once all the dust settles with this thing, like Tifu and Banks can still be friends and all that, but I also hope Banks understands that Tifu does not owe him for the rest of his life just because FaZe gave him a chance. You know what I mean? I think, I think FaZe Banks would do really well by seeing how Gary Vaynerchuk runs his business. Like Gary V is excited for his employees to move on to bigger and better things. He helps them, like he will help them find a better job. Like if, if there's something that they wanna pursue, he will link them up with his connections. You know what I mean? But like, I just don't like when relationships are transactional. Like, like FaZe Banks was like, rattling off all the things he's done for Tifu, and it's like, all right, dude, we get it. Like, are you gonna hold that over his head forever? You know? But anyways, let me know your thoughts on this. Uh, let me know if you can relate to any of the situations I talked about where somebody's trying to keep you in a relationship that you're not comfortable in anymore and you've had to do something to leave. Like, uh, but anyways, that's all I got for this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And a huge, huge thank you to everybody supporting the channel over on Patreon. You are all amazing. And if you'd like to become a patron, help support what I'm doing here and get your name in the credits and get involved in our monthly Q&A and all that good stuff, click or tap right there. All right. Thanks again so, so much for watching. I'll see you next time.